Hello, welcome back to Call Clutter Fairy, where I help you get clutter free so that you can live stress free. Today, I am going to show you how to make customized drawer dividers really inexpensively with an easy to find material. And that material is foam core. You can find these sheets at your local Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, 99 cent store, Walmart. Um, they're super inexpensive. They're about three feet wide by two and a half feet. Um, so you get a lot of material, certainly enough to do two or three drawers out of a dollar. I think that's a super inexpensive solution. And while I do love these types of organizers for drawers, um, when you're trying to organize a drawer with a lot of small things. In today's example, I'm going to be using my makeup. Um, it's really difficult to organize things when, let's face it, they're this big and even if you put it in into a small little box, it gets lost. Um, so oftentimes you need to find something that's a little bit more specific to an item that you're putting in or maybe you've got things that are long and narrow and certainly that won't fit but you also don't want a big giant box for such a small thing. So I'm always talking to you about a place for everything and everything in its place. Customizing dividers like this really allow you to set up homes for it. While I was looking on Pinterest, forgive the construction, um, this is my third take. I don't know what they're doing outside, but they waited until I started recording. <laughs> I saw on Pinterest where someone had taken their drawer dividers and they had cr done a cricket of an outline of the item that went in the drawer. So it was their ut utensil drawer. So they had the shape of serving forks, spatula, their ladles. It was so cute. Um, and that's what I like about customizing this on your own. DIYs allow you to absolutely give it the personality that you want and really match the items that you have. So let's get started. Again, I know that they sell dividers like this, but these types were just not meeting my needs and I kept trying to force it in. I'm not doing that anymore. So the first thing I did was cut up my foam core into strips. Now, again, I mentioned you don't want to have to dig inside of your sections because it's really difficult to get your fingers inside and get small things out if it's too deep. So in this instance, what I'm working with is one of these pull-out drawers, and it is just about three inches deep. I think it's about two and a half inches deep. So I made my dividers two inches, but on some of them, I don't know if you could see, some of them I did just an inch. It's a much shorter than, let me see if I can. So one, one section is, how am I gonna show you this? There. One section is two inches and then the front section is one inch. By doing this, when I'm putting small things, like this is going to be for my brushes and my mascaras, I have the ability to reach inside and get it. If you go to a deep section and you try and dig it out, oftentimes it's just more difficult. So I recommend shallow for the super small things, especially if it's in a tighter area. So the first thing that I did was I started laying out my supplies inside. I'm gonna look up and make sure that you can see what I'm doing over here. So I knew that I had my brushes. I knew that my finishing powder that I used Trust me, I don't do makeup, so if I call it the wrong thing, laugh at me and leave me a comment below about what it's really used for or what it's really called. I, I want to feel better when I do these videos, so I wear it. So once I had things laid out, I just started cutting these strips to the full length of the drawer. And what that did is it gave me the ability, actually I'm just going to snip one really quick right now cuts so easily and then I could slide it in so that I had the main dividers then I could start subdividing what I needed inside of those areas this took me less than five minutes um, 
There's so many different ways that you can cut this. What I found was an X-Acto knife and I had a straight edge, one of these big L-shaped cutters. And this allowed me to make sure that my cuts were super straight. I could put it up against the edge and cut along here. It also allowed me to put this edge along the bottom of the foam core to make sure that my vertical cuts were super straight. All right, so I'm just gonna use, ironically, the span of my uh, steel square is already two inches. So I'm just letting that be my easiest cutting guide. I am putting it all the way flush to the end. And like I said, making sure that I can cheat and use this side and this side to keep it perfectly square and straight. And then just dragging my X-Acto knife. You want to make sure the X-Acto knife you have is nice and sharp so that it doesn't make a mess of your paper. So if you're finding that it's ripping as you're going, if it's leaving jagged edges, get a new blade in your X-Acto knife, get a box cutter, get a knife even, and then you should have a much better cut. The purpose of making this customized is so that your things fit in here. So try not to give in to temptation of making sure everything is symmetrical because it's more important that what you have has a proper home in this than looking at it visually and saying, uh-oh, things are out of balance. So you could still make it look nice, just make sure again that it's a functional storage solution for your box, your drawer, whatever it is that you're organizing. So it looks like I'm only gonna need three columns, but as you can see, I've got some foundation here. I don't want that getting mixed up in here. Um, and then I have my cleaners and my primers. So I'm gonna make two small sections right here. And like I said, I am an eyeballer. So I'm just gonna line this up really quick and cut. That's my first, yeah, that's my first. And then we're gonna come right here and see what I've got. Cut that. And you can see how this starts coming together. Can you see that hopefully? So now, once I glue this, this will always have a home. I don't have to worry about it. I can reach in easily because that's a pretty important thing. Making sure that you can reach inside and grab it without your hands getting jumbled up inside of it. Now over here, my little brush is always rolling around. So I want a little spot for that, a completely dedicated spot. And then my finishing powder, again, it's always leaking, so I want a specific spot for that. And then these, I just want to be able to stand up. So I'm gonna make a couple of different spaces here, and then probably just have an open spot in the back for in case I ever add some sort of makeup. So again, let me grab a strip. The nice thing about this is I can just line it up against, and then I'll know exactly where to cut based on where this is positioned. You can measure with whatever tool you want, a ruler. If you wanna eyeball it like me, go for it. I'm just gonna slide that in. Make sure that I can reach in and grab my item because truly that's the purpose, that's the biggest function here. Go to my next piece, eyeball it, cut it. And now I have a dedicated, oh, I went too big. Make you a little smaller. All right, still a little too big. All right, now I can reach in. I can grab my brush, see that? So you can see I'm doing this real time with you. It is not taking me long at all to create this. Come up here. There's my last one there. All right, now I'm gonna come over to this section. So I don't use my pencil sharpener very often. <laughs> Probably should. If you're a beauty guru and you're watching this cringing, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I've always liked makeup. I've just never felt like I was very proficient in it. I've always thought it's kind of one of those expensive things that I should pamper myself with more. I just don't. So um, 
Yeah, I walk into places like Ulta and I see these beautiful colors. I'm like, oh, I want to get that. And then I look at the price. I'm like, it's $45 and immediately think, okay, my kids need shoes. My kids need this. I, and I don't get it. But I do love makeup. So if you're a beauty guru and you're watching this, please be nice to me. Okay, so I'm going to cut the very last piece, slide that in. And there you have it. Here is my customized divider set. With my glue gun, I literally just take the smallest bead, run it against the edge, slide it into place, and it is dried in seconds for my customized divider. I can cover this, like I said, with contact paper or with um, pretty wrapping paper or um, scrapbook paper. I don't care, I just want white. This way I can pull it right out if it ever gets too dirty, I can then just work on cleaning this up, but I want to be able to pull it out, clean up my drawer, and then just slip this right back inside. So think about this concept with deeper bins for Christmas ornaments, for collectibles, for your different craft projects. The great thing that I love with foam core, and I don't know if you've discovered this before. Let me grab my knife one second. When you cut foam core, if you don't go all the way through, just I'd say like 90%, when you get ready to fold it, if you snap it away from the cut, it actually breaks and you have a super clean line. Um, or of course, you can just make sure to go through once or twice, have something underneath um, because you don't want whatever's underneath your cutting surface to get marred or damaged, of course. But you guys, this is limitless. You guys, that's all I have for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed watching how I made my customized divider. If you've made one of these or if you're planning on trying one, please let me know in the comments below how it went. If you've used other materials such as cardboard or a plastic or any type of cereal boxes, I'd love to know what worked for you and how you made a customized storage solution for your small crafts or drawers. In the meantime, please make sure you hit like on this video. And if you're not a subscriber, I definitely would love it if you could hit subscribe and the notification bell that tells YouTube that my content is exactly what you'd like to see. And it allows me to keep making videos for you. In the meantime, love you and I'll see you next week.